Okay, and I think this will be our last hand for the day because we do have quite a colorful matchup here. This table, okay, we're playing again in a 100. We got this Alex guy, really typical tag stats, 15% uh, VPIP, 10% PFR, 3.1% aggression factor, really, really solid guy, 30% uh, steal raise percentage, getting to the showdown 20% and winning over half when he does get down there. I'm curious to see what his win rate is. He's actually, I mean, with those really strong stats, over 1,700 hands, he's actually lost um, 119 bucks. Well, didn't expect that, but uh, these are strong stats, and this just shows you, you know, you can play really, really well, and yeah, it can still go south. I mean, that's that's variance, guys. Uh, and sometimes, you know, you're picking the wrong moves. 3.1 is aggressive. Uh, picking the wrong spots for for aggression that that adds up over time. So here we've got another guy, this uh, Reggie, who is also really strong. I mean, 15 and 12 split. Uh, he's raising. He's still raising a bit too much at 42 percent and uh, 2.8 percent or 2.8 aggression factor post slot yeah I mean that's yeah again typical ABC numbers tags uh, tag lag kind of guys really good players in general when you see these kind of stats be aware of that uh, here we've got one for 114 very typical again ABC kind of guy um, post slot he's getting He's going the distance here, 45 percent, but only winning 20 percent. So that that speaks for, um, yeah, a guy who's again four four aggression factors try to push off people too much. Um, yeah, looks like he got called a couple times and uh, went south. And let's see what his win rate is. Probably quite yeah, 63 down for minus 56 big blinds per hundred at that point. So here we've got Sunday. Uh, this guy is our opponent in this hand, and he's got you know suited max stretch connector in position, which is a very playable hand. And uh, we've got only got 167 hands on him, but he's playing every every fifth hand, raising every ninth, uh, steel raising a lot, as you see here at 41%. And so that means. The later this guy gets in position, the more he's going to be widening in his range. So this actually this 41% only pertains to this position cutoff, the button, or the small blind. But this kind of guy, I mean, with that kind of stat, they're going to be raising very, very similar ranges, also from the hijack or from the position right, yeah, right. Let's say right to the right of the cutoff. Uh, 2.4. I mean, not super aggressive post flop, but uh, yeah, respectable getting to the showdown 17% of the time and winning 60%. So when he gets to the showdown, he's winning. Um, and it looks like, you know, we might be able to push him off of some of these some of these hands. But again, we've only got 167 hands on him. But even at that point, you know, we have a good idea of how this guy's, how this guy's performing. What's his win rate? All right, so he's also down a bit, 41, per, uh, 41 bucks. Uh, here we've got our typical uh, loose passive pre-flop guy, you know, uh, probably break even Steven kind of cat yeah I was also down at 83 um, yeah I mean looking at a lot of flops when he raises pre-flop he's got monsters you know pretty much what this guy's doing before he does okay uh, let's see here anybody else is interesting this guy's very very strong we've got 227 hands on him um, He's folding a bit too much in the in the big and the small blind to steals, but again, 15% VPIP total, 11% raise, 36% steal raise, 3.5 uh, aggression factor, getting to showdown 35% of the time and winning 63% of the time. So, you know, I've defaulted all of my stats here uh, according to colors, and yeah, anytime you see a guy with a lot of red, <laughs> you got a you got a heads up there. He's yeah, he's one to watch out for. So his yeah his name is Sufferwell, <laughs> quite indicative. All right, and our stats at this point we've got 58,000 hands, 6.9% uh, aggression factor again, 14-10 uh, split as you see up there uh, for the V pip and the PFR and 25% steel raise. So yeah, very typical ABC guys. We've got a lot of um, ABCers on this on this table. And if this were a ring game, I, were pl I was playing here uh, rush tables. But if this were a ring game, this would be one that you would want to avoid. You know you got Essentially, uh, one, two, three, really strong players directly behind you, right? Which means you're gonna be playing out of these guys out of position, 
uh, a lot. And, you know, you've got a couple guys over here to your right that you can definitely take advantage of basically these three here uh, with these funky splits of 24 and 13-8 uh, and, um, let's see. Yeah, but even here, I mean, this guy's quite aggressive. I mean, this, this table in general is one that you could, in a ring game, definitely avoid. It's, I mean, you're looking at four or five really solid players of nine, and, yeah, that doesn't add up well. You can, you can definitely find better playing conditions. So, anyways, we've got this... Um, uh, Zundberg guy here, it suited Jack-10, and the action looks like this. So he only min-raised with 10-jack here from the hijack. And we, of course, re-raised that uh, with our suited ace-king that could have been, should have been a bit more. We only raised him right under three times his raise size, and including our, our post that should have been at least 657. Um, See, at this point, he's getting 30% uh, to call that, and that's more than enough for um, for flopping a playable flop with the suited uh, max stretch connector. And so the flop comes, and here's a very typical situation where we've, yeah, for all intents and purposes, missed the flop. Okay, we didn't pair our ace or our king, but we are too suited here. All right, so we've got the flush draw, and we can assume on most most boards after a min raise like that from late position um, that any ace and any king is going to be good. So we're going to give ourselves the full 15 outs, and it, exactly that is the case here, and that gives us 53%, even though we quote unquote missed the flop. 53% okay, equity we have against this guy who actually flopped top pair. Okay, that shows you the strength again of very strong um, strong draws on the flop. Now, if we don't hit any of our flush outs or our king or our ace on the turn, be very mindful of how how different your equity looks coming into the coming into the river. You know, action was like this. We're in the big blind here. It's folded around. The jack ten min raises. We three bet. Okay, he calls and flops top pair. We bet that out as a semi bluff for six fifty into 11.50. So that gives this guy 2.7 to 1 odds. And of course, he is even, given the equity split right now, with top pair, he's behind us. He only calls, and here comes the turn. Now, as you see here, we had 53% on the flop. And this is a very good example of an equity swing. So we've got 34% now because we're on a one card draw all of a sudden, and we still have the same amount of outs but that is an enormous switch as you guys will see here it's 19 percent uh, equity difference and this guy just jumped up enormously um, so we go ahead and make a second barrel in this case a second barrel semi bluff a lot of players they're not going to make this uh, second barrel as a continuation of their initial semi, uh, semi bluff we go ahead and make that play because he's gonna he's gonna let that go quite a lot so this, this move has a lot of things going for it. It's not only that you have 34% equity, but you're going to have a lot of fold equity against this guy right here. So you're, you're showing a lot of strength, and most players aren't going to expect a semi-bluff two streets in a row like that. And yeah, most, most players, most beginning players, if they do take a C-bet shot, it's normally just a flop bet, and they leave it at that. So this guy could have floated us. He would just basically call our C-bet. We check, and then he raises... Uh, into us on the turn, but we don't allow that. We go ahead and make our C bet on the turn, which is in this case also semi bluff. So again, you know, you have your equity, all your equity plus in this case probably a lot of fold equity, unless of course he min raised uh, cold called with a pair of threes or eights, which would have given him the set right here. So, um, anyways, we go ahead and continue our aggression as we often will, and that was yeah more or less two thirds pot and he only calls okay and then we hit one of our outs all right which is in this case the flush and because of that aggression he's probably yeah i don't know he might you know he knows that we're super aggressive you know cuz he's going to have at least 167 hands on us too if he's not using um, hand mining software he may even have much more um so he knows we're super aggressive and that we might be playing small middle pairs that missed uh, to the end aggressively and you know sometimes he's gonna catch 
bluffs here for sure. But the good thing about that semi-bluff, semi-bluff is that he's not necessarily going to put us on that flush. All right, so at this point in the hand, you know, it's on the river. We've made two aggressive moves, and we then continue and make a, a river c-bet. And this time, of course, we're completed. And at this point, we only make a half-pot bet. We want to get called, of course. And, yeah, with that half-pot bet, he is more likely to call it than when we push. So, value bet on the end after two semi-bluffs that luckily on the river hit. Again, we were on the flop ahead of him equity-wise. Enormous swing coming into the turn when we miss. Continue our aggression for both equity and uh, fold equity purposes. And then we, of course, hit on the river. And let's see if we get paid off. Yeah, we do. So he paid it, uh, and we take down 109.5 minus the rake. So this concludes our video on player profiling. I hope that it did provide you with a very strong foundation for understanding the statistics that poker tracking software such as Hold'em Manager provides. And I also hope that it gave you the means to properly use these statistics in combination with your reads, with the table conditions, with the history that you may have with the players both online and offline in order to properly identify the types of opponents that you're facing. And when you can do that, when you can do that accurately, over time your bankroll will thank you for it. It is the potentially the decisive factor in distinguishing just break-even players from long-term winners, uh, in addition, of course, to tells and all of the topics that Mike Kira covers in his, his book of tells, which you should definitely have a look at, especially if you plan to play live. And if you are playing online, in addition to these profiling concepts and tips based on the statistics, you should definitely have a look at different websites that go into online tells. They can be definitely useful for some players. I would take them very relatively. They're nowhere near as valuable, in my opinion, as live tells. Because, yeah, when you're not looking at the player, uh, most of it is uh, simply timing tells and bet sizing. Okay, and the weaker the player, based on the profiling stats that we just looked at, the more you can believe uh, typical advice given for online tells. But again, don't take it at face value. Always take it, uh, this advice, especially online tells, always look at it in combination with the statistics that you have for your players online and make your, make your decisions based on a very comprehensive understanding of the player that you have across the table from you. Given this information and a lot of experience on your side, after maybe 100,000, 200, 300, 400,000 hands, you'll be amazed at how exactly you can put players on ranges, even put play players on specific hands, given their player type, given their profile, given their uh, statistics in certain situations, in certain positions, uh, under certain uh, table conditions. And this is a skill that's developed over time. This is not going to be one that you're going to develop in a week. However, I believe that we provided you with all of the information and means to get you started and get you moving in the right direction for sure. Combine this with your experience. Again, see all the different videos on bet types, pot manipulation, uh, poker math. Develop a very, very strong foundation in the game as such. And then build upon that by incorporating these concepts, uh, these player profiling concepts, into your game. And again, I would only recommend for those of you who are just getting started online to play one and two tables in the beginning. Really focus on stati uh, statistics. Focus on yeah, player profiling again. Focus on your opponents. Be very conscious when you play. And then as this becomes uh, more second nature for you, only then should you expand the, the number of tables that you're playing at any given time, so-called multi-tabling. In the next video, bet types and pot manipulation will expound upon all of the different moves that different players will be making both online and live. So definitely check out that video in connection with this one, in connection with all of the previous ones as well, and all of the 
reference material that we provided you guys with in the initial videos. And with that, you will definitely be miles ahead of the great majority of all the competition that you'll face in the future. Again, this is Dylan, and as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at any time.